Hi everyone, my name is Pablo Alonso and I am presenting our work Leveraging Between Autoencoders for Interpretable Prototype Learning of Music Audio. This work is framed in the context of interpretable AI. We believe that developing interpretable models is crucial uh, for several reasons, including developing faithful models and I'm thinking in applications such as uh, music recommender systems or music production tools where we want users to trust and understand why the model is taking particular uh, decisions. Um, but focusing also in the developers of the models, uh, being able to diagnose issues with the training data or labels, detect potential adversarial attacks to the models, or just to get insight into the target task that we are working with. In particular, we are working with a framework called prototypical learning Compared to a traditional black box classifier, where you, where the model sets a number of weights to turn um, input samples into output class probabilities, a prototype classifier defines a number of prototypes that uh, live in the same space as, as the input samples, and produce these output probabilities by measuring distance between the data samples and the learnable prototypes. So after training, you can uh, analyze the, the learned prototypes in order to, to gain understanding on, on the task. The APNet is a prototype network developed by Pablo Cinemanas, which is also an author of this paper. And the idea is that the prototype network is trained in the embedding space of an autoencoder. So after training, the prototypes can be passed through the decoding module in order to get a sonification uh, to interpret the classes. However, the APNet has certain limitations. First of all, according to the authors, it suffers from scalability issues. So it was difficult to increase the number of prototypes or extend the model to classification tasks with a large number of classes. And also the sonification was biased towards certain data samples. So uh, the decoder module ne needs to access the index used in the pooling layers from the encoder. So as Pro the prototypes were learned in the embedding space and we don't have this information. This was taken from closed data samples. Our proposed method works a little bit different. So first of all, we don't need to train the autoencoder and the prototype network at the same time. So this process is decoupled. This means that we can uh, leverage uh, state-of-the-art autoencoders. So we focus in self-supervised autoencoders in this uh, work because they are trained in much more data. Uh, and also, this approach eliminates the need of uh, transferring specific information from training sample, which uh, allows to sonify exclusively the information contained in the prototypes without uh, bias towards any, any samples from the training set. In this slide, we show uh, a division of interpretable models that we think is useful. So in one stream, we would have user-oriented uh, methods, for example, uh, the pointing and justification model, which is um, a method in, in which the model outputs language explanations. So they're very useful to, to, to the final user. They can understand why the model is doing a specific decision. In the other stream, we have developer-oriented methods, such as feature visualization. So for example, using saliency maps in these approaches, the, 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 the method can highlight certain parts of certain layers of the model, so that users can use this information to improve uh, the model or detect problems with them. But of course, this information wouldn't be useful for the final users of the models. In the middle, we have the sonification approaches, and there are a few ones, like the already mentioned APNet or AudioLime. We consider that these uh, sonification approaches are a little bit closer to the final user because they're prioritized having very high uh, audio quality. Um, in the case of IPNet, as I said, by transferring information from data samples, our approach doesn't allow to get such uh, high quality reconstruction. But since we are not using additional information to uh, the information contained in the prototypes, we believe that this is something that is closer to the uh, developer in the sense that we, we are not altering the information in the prototypes to get the sonifications. So our approach has two steps. First of all, we uh, find this autoencoder that we want to use and learn prototypes in its embedding space. And then we try um, the prototype network. Our prototype network is fixed for all our experiments. Uh, it works by minimizing the L2 distance between samples and the learnable prototypes. And after this, there is a classifier that maps the similarities between samples and prototypes into class probabilities. So we use two loss functions. First of all, we use cross entropy uh, to increase the accuracy of the task. And we have a prototype loss intended to make prototypes as close as possible to data samples so that the reconstruction is meaningful. 
Our work is inspired by the recent advances in neural audio codecs. So the first thing that we considered was just training the prototype network in the um, embedding space of one of these encoders. So we uh, focus in the encoder method and we use the, its neural codes. However, this results in very poor classification performance and the audio quality was very bad. We, could only, we couldn't listen to anything uh, meaningful. As a second iteration, we considered the encoder model uh, which was trained by Leonardo Pepino, who is also an author of this paper. This is a, a mask encoder model trained on top of encoder embeddings, which means that the decoder has already some uh, capability to reconstruct missing parts, and we believe that this could be beneficial. What we achieved was a model that had a good classification performance, but still we couldn't find good reconstruction quality. Uh, we could only distinguish some textures that were sometimes related to the input classes, but not always. And since this model keeps the same temporal resolutions as in codec, we hypothesized that we need to learn prototypes in a more abstract uh, space where temporal resolution was smaller. So here we have a, an example of, of how the sonification of this model sounded like. So in order to compress the representation a, a bit more, we um, train a model. So the, the models, uh, this is a diagram of how the model works. The color blocks are the, the models that we train. We train a transformer model to summarize uh, four seconds of input audio into a single embedding. And then for the decoding part, we train a denoising transformer uh, that was conditioned on this summarizing uh, embedding. And with this, we managed to keep the classification performance. We're starting to have sonifications that we could uh, identify as belonging to, to the class. In the last iteration, we uh, keep the architecture, but this was trained with more data and we extend the sequence length to 10 seconds and we got the following reconstruction. So what we observe here is that this example um, belongs to the class of uh, Riggy music and we can identify the typical elements, the typical drums, the typical guitars present in Riggy music. However, the prototype is not very coherent in the temporal dimension. So the way we interpret this is that this information might not be available because the model is not able to understand it and process it. So the model doesn't require temporal coherence to classify rigid, only needs to, to find the elements, which is already giving some insights on how the model works. We work with three music classification datasets. Betley Solos DB is an instrument recognition dataset with eight classes. Gdesan is a general recognition dataset with 10 classes. And Shai Genera is a general recognition dataset with 20, 24 classes that we created specifically for this work. So this table compares the performance achieved with state-of-the-art models, a baseline consisting on APNet trained with five prototypes, um, a ceiling performance consisting on training MLPs on top of the encoded my and the summarization of the encoded my embeddings, and finally our prototype network embeddings trained on top of the summarization of the encoded my embeddings, and we experiment with one to forty prototypes. Our results shows that the state of the art is about the performance of the encoded my embeddings, and we can do better than this, so this, that's why this is our performance ceiling. However, when we compare the prototype networks to the MLP, we show that the degradation in performance is small, uh, never more than 3%. Um, that using a large number of prototypes is generally good for the performance. Finally, that we can uh, get competitive results using a very small uh, prototype network consisting in less than 100,000 parameters. We perform a number of experiments to evaluate the sonification of the prototypes. First of all, there are more examples available in the companion website of this project. Additionally, we were interested in assessing if the decoder could be altering the class information in the prototypes. For this, we perform an experiment consisting on classifying the sonified prototypes and we observed that the accuracy was superior to 99%. So this means that what we are hearing is exactly what the model, almost exactly what the model expects as representing the class because the performance is, is really high. 
We observe that the sound of the prototypes is very far from real class instances. However, they always have elements that are very representative from the class. And this suggests that the, the classifier doesn't need the music to, to be realistic. It only has to, to contain this specific um, iconic uh, element. And also we observed that the sonification of the instrument classes was more convincing than the general classes. And this is probably because the sounds are less complex. The conclusions of this work is that decoupling the process of training uh, the autoencoder and the prototype network allows for a much more flexible setup, which allows for adapting off-the-shelf uh, existing models. And also this allows you to train a less complex prototype network that is able to support more prototypes, classes and training samples. Our approach targets model developers instead of final users since the sonifications are not so realistic, but they are more explicit about the information contained in the prototypes. And finally, the prototype network suffers small performance degradation compared to a standard classifier with proofs that this approach uh, doesn't compromise interpretability with the performance. For future work, we will consider uh, conditioning our diffusion decoder with arbitrary embeddings, since uh, we believe that this framework would support that case. We will consider increasing the model sequence length, since we observed that this had a beneficial impact in the quality of the reconstruction and we will explore a technique that allow to increase the diver diversity of the synthesized prototypes since we observed that when we were increasing this number we could observe prototypes that had a very similar sound so that was all thank you very much for your time and attention